In this video, we will cover the process of selling a house in a divorce. On today's show, I have Holly McClung. Holly is a certified divorce real estate expert. I wanted to bring Holly in on the series we are doing around real estate and divorce because as a tenured realtor and going through the process of getting certified as a divorced real estate expert, Holly has insight into the complexities of selling a home during this time where there can be a lot of emotion and complex hurdles to overcome. Now, before we get into today's episode, I do want to take a moment to address the gravity of our topic. Divorce is a deeply personal and often challenging experience, and we want to approach it with the utmost sensitivity and respect. Our aim is not to trivialize or to make light of the emotions involved, nor do we seek to encourage anyone to undertake this process lightly. Instead, we recognize that divorce is a reality for many individuals, and it can often involve complex real estate transactions. Our series is intended to provide guidance and support to those navigating this difficult journey, offering practical insights to help avoid common pitfalls and make informed decisions. We want to emphasize that our intention is to be a valuable resource, not to exploit or sensationalize the difficulties of divorce. Our goal is to offer clarity and support during what can be a confusing and emotionally charged time. We hope that our content proves helpful and informative to those who may need it. And the other disclaimer to add is we are not licensed real estate attorneys or family law attorneys. Any advice or recommendations shared in this series are based on research and experience, but they should not be considered as a substitute for professional legal counsel. Therefore, it is crucial to consult with a qualified attorney in your area who can provide personal guidance tailored to your specific circumstances. And with that out of the way, Let's get to the interview. Well, Holly, I am so glad to have you on the show today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Yeah, so today we are talking about real estate and divorce. And the reason I wanted to bring you on is because the process is different when you are selling a house through a divorce. There's Absolutely. a lot more involved than uh, your typical home sale, which already has a lot involved. So kind of to start this out, can you tell us what, um, you know, what are some of the differences when you're selling a home through a divorce? divorce versus just your regular home sale? Well, one of the big factors that I've seen is that communication. You've got two parties that I'm trying to communicate the same story to both sides. Another thing is you've got two parties with different end goals, but they still have an interest in this same property together that you're trying to keep this moving forward. You know, there are instances for where, you know, I could be called to testify in court um, to advise the court where we are in the process or any challenges that may arise during that process. In the intro, I mentioned that you have this designation, the Certified Divorce Real Estate Expert right. designation, and, and that's no easy feat to get. And the reason I wanted to bring you on the show is because I think it's so important that uh, people know that it takes this extra work uh, to be able to, to manage this process effectively and efficiently for sellers going through this rough time. Right. So can you tell us a little bit about what you had to go through to get that designation? It is a full 12 week course. We go through learning financial situations that arise during that um, managing and respecting court orders because sometimes there's court orders that are involved in a divorcing couple situation. And sometimes that may affect the property that I'm trying to sell. So we have to be able to stick to those um, court orders and stuff in, that are in place and be able to communicate that to the court as well. And another reason I knew that you would be a great person to interview for this is because you do have a background in the legal field. And I have seen, because we've worked together for many years, and so I've seen how you've been able to use that to your advantage. Um, can you tell us about some of the ways that you've been able to you know, parlay that experience into helping sellers in these situations? Absolutely. So um, I was a paralegal um, for roughly 20 years in different capacities. Um, I worked for a firm in Dallas and I worked um, out in Kaufman um, in a firm as well there too. So I was able to be firsthand in the courtroom, watch the process, see how it unfolds. Um, I drafted orders sometimes as necessary. I had to answer questions with regards to a particular case and stuff. So I did that for roughly 20 years, which I really loved. Um, and I have a great heart for that as well, too. But I'm able to use that to see how to put that together with real estate now and people going through a really difficult time during their life. And I've really married the two together here with real estate and my paralegal experience in an effort to be able to navigate personalities and 
be able to know how to be comfortable with the courts. I think just the angle of being comfortable with the courts is, you know, a really important thing, too, because there is so much that, you know, you are dealing with attorneys. You could be in the position where you're dealing with a judge. And having that experience for so many years just makes you more of a natural and able to handle these. And there's so much that happens when you are able to kind of take control in a calm and supportive way. Because, I mean, if you're going at this in a divorce, I mean, tensions are high. Absolutely. And so it takes someone who has the expertise, the training, the designation to be able to manage those heightened emotions. Absolutely. Now we know that there are definitely some differences um, with just the process in general. You know, we mentioned having these heightened emotions and everything. So what are some of the challenges and pitfalls that you see divorcing couples have in the process of selling a home? Well, there are a lot of emotions do run high in this situation. And it's going to take somebody that can manage those emotions, that can keep it diffused, Mm -hmm. um, and just stay focused on the end goal, which is to get this property sold to help this family out. During the negotiation process on this I have two separate sellers. I they have client confidentiality with me, so I'm not I have to be very careful and discreet about what I say. So they are negotiating with me. They're not going to be negotiating with each other. Mm-hmm. Um and so therefore they get to speak their mind, say what they have to say, and we're really it focuses them directly to that buyer instead of having because they're already in a situation where nobody really wants to work together. So I'm here to be that neutral party for them and to keep things managed, keep their emotions diffused. And I am the middleman there where I am a neutral party on their behalf. We've mentioned now probably 20 times in the first two minutes that it's a tense situation when we're going through a divorce uh, sale. So I imagine that you've come across some instances where you've had some disagreements between the two parties. So how do you navigate those when you've got parties disagreeing on pricing or repairs or negotiations? Well, that's where I'm going to come in. And as a realtor, I'm going to come in and I'm going to read the market and I'm going to show them the numbers. and show them what the market is saying about their particular property. Of course, we want to make sure that the home is cleaned uh, appropriately and staged, and I try to help out with that as much as possible to help eliminate any stress on that as well, too. So I do read the market, show them the numbers, and I'm going to pull properties and numbers that are what I think an appraiser is going to pull and look at the property as far as what its actual value is, and I want to give them a really true, accurate um, number on that. So if they're disagreeing, we want to make sure and keep their goal in mind and the end goal and move towards that. And part of that is looking at what numbers an appraiser is going to pull and make sure that we get as close to that as possible. Yeah, because this is, you know, d- depending on when you're watching this video, we are at a time when sellers are trying to push the market and see how much they can get. And, you know, as a, you know, regular realtor, with that being the typical goal must, most sellers have, right. um, it is a bit different when you're going at it this way that you want to make sure that you're kind of looking backwards instead of forwards, because looking forwards could put you in a position where you're sitting on the market for six months and it's the last piece of the puzzle that needs to close before everything can be finalized. So I like that you look at it a little differently than maybe the neighborhood realtor would to try and push the market, but actually look at what's actually possible soon as far as instead of. Yeah. And honestly, we always want to get the most amount of money, even for a divorcing couple, because now they're having to take the funds from a household that they have. And now they're splitting that into two. Mm -hmm. So now they're having to split this money and um, they're trying to move, pick up the pieces of their life and move mm-hmm. on. So um, I did want to add that, so I've been able to have an evaluation of all of my listings over the last several years. And my sales price to list price ratio is right at 100%. Um, we have evaluated that and looked at that. So I give them a very close, true number. I'm not going to overinflate it. I want to be very realistic because I don't want them to get surprised later down the road. 
and it's $50,000 less than what they expected. Yeah, that's a good point, especially when you're making plans, um, big life plans on, on the proceeds. Um, you want to make sure you're starting with an accurate number. Because they've already got that money spent at that point. Yeah, you're right. You're right. No, that's really good advice. So kind of piggybacking from that question, what are some of the common disagreements that you see go on when two divorcing people are selling a home? Bottom line, it's going to come down to the money because yeah. everybody needs to move on. Mm-hmm. They're trying to pick up the pieces. Um, and it takes a lot to rebuild their lives at this point. And I like that your training and your history just gives you that empathy it, to know that this is this is a lot and that that is so important to get that right, knowing that the bottom line really is kind of the end all be all of the process and that you're starting on the right foot. I think that's a great way to look at it. How does the emotional aspect of divorce impact the sale of the house and what strategies can people use to to minimize the stress during this process. These are very emotional situations uh, generally for these divorcing couples and families. There's a lot involved. Sometimes there's children involved. So as a neutral party, first of all, hire that professional. These sellers are having to agree on terms of a contract for their selling their home at a time when they can't agree on anything else. So having that professional that can look at this, recognize the stresses and the triggers of these families and be able to diffuse that is is really a a, a good, a big point for them. Yeah, one of the things that I say a lot to people when talking about um, when because we get a lot of reach outs of, you know, hey, who do you recommend? And we make sure that we recommend people who are true professionals in the field. And especially for something as nuanced as selling in a divorce, what I tell people is you want to benefit from someone's breadth of experience as opposed to being someone's learning experience. Absolutely. When things, when tensions are this high and there's so much to, to lose if it's not done right, uh, you definitely want to make sure that you're hiring, or hiring a professional. And so I think that, you know, to your point is just if you can start there and put a lot of that, you know, the responsibility and the the need on the professional who knows how to handle it, I think that's going to relieve some of the tension and, and make it a little less stressful. Um, you know, unfortunately I I doubt you can wave a magic wand. No, (laughs) I wish we could, but it doesn't work always that way. So, but you know, as far as what steps you can take working with someone who knows what they're doing is, is a great way to do that. So I, I think that's really solid advice. So what are some tips that you have for divorcing couples to effectively cooperate and communicate during this home sale? Well, all of the communication is going to be channeled through me. Um, I'm the neutral party. They're going to be negotiating with me. Then in the event that it's needed, I will always update the attorneys. It takes a lot of that off of the attorneys. So and for the consumer and this family as well, every time they're having to reach out to their attorney, it's billing them their time. Well, I can help take that off. That's a less expense that they're having to argue and call the attorney that, you know, so-and-so did this or that or whatever, I take that on. And they communicate with me as a neutral party. And then I communicate with the buyers through there. So I take all of that away from them. As we've said multiple times, I can imagine that helps diffuse the, the tension in the room also. Yes. Are you ever in a position where you're working directly with the court or have to go to court for any of this? So there are times where that can be required. The judge may want you to come in to give an update on the case or to give the end results, or um, an attorney may ask you to come in and testify as to a certain situation in uh, relation to this transaction or what's going on with the property um, and any uh, challenges that you may come up with as well. So yes, there are opportunities for that that I could uh, have to appear in court. So I can imagine back to the certified divorce real estate expert designation that those are things that you're trained to handle that you know what to bring you know what needs to be done to again make it efficient and effective your time with the other attorneys and time in court because the the every minute that goes past that clock it's more money for the client to spend on attorney fees yes and that also helps 
keep them from having to spend that money and it keeps it lessens the phone calls and conflict to the attorneys if I can take this piece off of them. So considering that you're a certified divorce real estate expert, how is hiring someone like you to manage the sale of the home different than just hiring your neighborhood realtor? So we do have the added training. Um, in addition to this designation and added training here, I also have 20 years of legal experience behind me. Um, so there is a lot of training and you want to make sure, I mean, some things, little things can be triggers to these families and you want to make sure to kind of control that and keep that as neutralized as possible. Um, and I am a, an expert in this area and can be qualified as an expert to testify in the event that I need to, to for um, a divorcing couple. And there, like I said earlier, there are court orders that have to be respected and maintained. Um, there could be uh, a restraining order. There could be visitation orders. There's all types of things that could impact the sale of the home. Holly, as we wrap this up, what's some of the final advice that you have for people who are starting that process of getting their home on the market or thinking about getting their home on the market and they unfortunately happen to be in a divorce situation? I would advise them to seek out a CDRE who is a certified divorce real estate expert that's a specialist in this area because this does exist because there was a gap in the way divorce and real estate intersects. You wouldn't go seek out a dental hygienist to go do your root canal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you know, you want to make sure that you have that expert that's trained to do this and can handle it efficiently for you. And hopefully then that will help make things move smoother on this end. Well, Holly, thank you so much. I know this was a lot of information and there's so much more information that you have. And we talked about maybe getting into more detail on things, but as you explained to me, every situation is so nuanced and so unique that it would be impossible to do a short video on all the recommendations. And so I want to encourage you, if you are in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and you are wanting to get in touch with Holly to talk more about maybe your situation and some advice that she might have for you from a sales perspective. Uh, Holly, how can people reach out to you? You can always reach me um, on my cell phone number is 214-235-5960. Um, or you can always email me at hollymcclung at kw.com. I'm happy to help. I'm happy to be of assistance to you and see how I can help guide you. And you also have a pretty detailed curriculum vitae that I will attach with this, uh, the description of this video so people can take a look at that as well. Holly, again, thank you so much. And hopefully this has been a really good help for those of you watching. If you have stayed to this portion, we want to thank you by sending you a guide to help you through this process. This guide covers selling a home during a divorce, buying a home during a divorce, and what you should know about property division during a divorce. Just go to divorceguide.thecrestedgegroup.com to get your guide. And if you are looking for more guidance on buying or selling a home in a divorce, we can connect you to a certified divorce real estate expert wherever you are. These are seasoned professionals who know the intricacies of this process. You can go to divorceguide.thecrestedgegroup.com and click on connect with a specialist button or reach out to me directly by phone or text to 214-803-4444 or send me an email to jshannon at kw.com. This episode is sponsored by Home Buying for Women. Home Buying for Women gives women steps step-by-step -step guidance, support, and resources to help them achieve their goal of home ownership. You can learn more at homebuyingforwomen.com. In addition, those who like to wear suits in the office tell me that I need to let you know that this content is for general informational purposes only. This should not be construed as financial, economic, legal, or tax advice. This content is provided without any warranty or guarantee of its accuracy. In order to make the best financial and legal decision for your situation, you should seek advice from a seasoned attorney, CPA, financial, or investment advisor, lender, or realtor. Well, I will see you in the next video.